Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to ask that uh, if you're going to be a speaker, that you step up to the microphone so that they are able to uh, hear and record. Uh, you can't close it all the way, but you can most anyway. Thanks. All right, so first item on the agenda is a notice of intent for 52 Highland Road. I recuse myself because I'm that person. Read the notice. According to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wetlands Protection Act, there will be a hearing on notice of intent under the Wetlands Protection Act. <clears throat> MGL by Joseph Chamberlain for grading construction of a single family home to be done within the 100 foot buffer zone of a bordering vegetated wetland. Location of the work is 52 Highland Road, Assessor's Map 32, Block 1. Lot 11B. Is that, is that correct? That's not correct. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, March 26th at 7 p.m. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Brad Fitzgerald from SFG Engineering with the Project Engineers. <clears throat> so, Joe, have, want, we've gone to the planning board, cut out this lot for Joe. He's going to build this house. Uh, the house itself is more than 100 feet from the wetlands. The septic system, which is on the um, Westerly side of the house is more than 150 feet from the wetland. Yeah, the, big, the reason we're here is that because Joe wants to have a walkout basement, we've got to cut down the grade on the, that side of the house back till it's level with a slight grade toward the wetland. So that's going to bring us to within about 25 feet, no closer than 25 feet from the edge of wetland. So it's just grading. It's just the, grading. It's the, the only thing that the... Um, in the buffer. The, in the buffer zone. Okay. And so that, that'll be graded. Any... Any excess material that he can't use around his property will get trucked away to somewhere correct. And um, it'll be loamed and seeded. Um, and the siltation barriers will stay up until it's, it's taken, it's established. Yep. Those will go up before anything starts. And that's basically it. Okay. And I'm doing this out of an abundance of caution. <laughs> <laughs> it's a highly visible road. You know, oh, you know somebody would be calling. Oh, absolutely. You want to make sure I do it right. <laughs> no. Because you never know what, what, where you end up going. You know? so that's why two of us went out to, to verify the wetlands land. We went out uh, with Lenore, and she looked at it. And, and she actually moved, moved a little bit, didn't she? Okay. Um, but otherwise, we're, we're satisfied, and I, I would recommend that we approve it. Uh, I have a question for you. I don't remember you saying where the well's going to go. In front of the house. In front. We're showing it right up. Which is outside the buffer? Oh, yeah. Yes. Way up, way up. It's about 120 feet, 115 feet, just adjacent to the driveway over here near the garage side. Really? This pink line would be your 100 foot buffer in the wells up here. Anyone else have any questions, comments? I'll make a motion that we, is this a close the hearing? Yep. And issue a. Our conditions for yeah for 52 Highland Road. Our standard order. It was standard. Yeah, I don't see any special okay. uh, conditions. All right, we have a motion. to have a second? Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very That's much. It. Great. <clears throat> Sounds good. All right, we're all settled. Let's move on. Next is another notice of intent, this time for 38 Rear Rhode Island Road, um, by LMUD, Lakeville Mixed Use Development. Yes. All right. According to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wetlands Protection Act, we'll be hearing on a notice of intent by Lakeville Mixed Use Development, LLC, for the construction of a 24-foot paved access with associated grading and drainage within the energy source areas and bordering vegetated wetland. 
Location of the project is 38 Rhode Island Road and rear Rhode Island Road, map 60, block 7, lots 1G and 1D. Public hearing will be held on Tuesday, March 26th at 7 p.m. Yep. Oh, I gave you the wrong person. I apologize. That's okay. We're, we, we're big on formality here. <laughs> uh, good evening for the record. Niles Zager from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Uh, would you like for me to wait just to make sure that the... Oh, no. Don't worry about that. Okay. We'll catch up with this later if we have to. Again, for the record, Niles Zager from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Um, here... Um, for a project off of Rhode Island Road. Uh, what we're doing is we're proposing a limited uh, project for uh, access to the rear of the property. Uh, it's, it's, it does uh, require some wetland uh, disturbance and wetland crossing. Um, as you can see, um, we have a few different plans that we've provided you with blow-ups and different, uh, and I'll go through those. Um, but what we're proposing is there's a small section of area here that we are proposing to disturb. Um, and in replication to that, we have proposed uh, a few different replication areas. Um, we're about 1.2 uh, ratio on the replication area that we're proposing. Um, <clears throat> you can see the extent, all the extents of the work are um, delineated in silt sock uh, for erosion control. Um, and we have, what we've done is um, we've proposed two 42 inch uh, it's a pretty large wetland area, two 42-inch uh, pipes um, as far as uh, feeding across the crossing. That way, because obviously water is going to be dammed up, this will allow the passage of the water. Um, what we've done is we've met, we've provided all the information to you in the packet, but what we've done is we've gone through the full stormwater management report, um, and we've provided uh, calculations um, and an alternatives analysis as well, I believe. Um, and what we're doing is we're proposing what we're doing is proposing drainage basin um, at the front of right at the entrance of Rhode Island Road in the cross in the um, access road. Um, there's a detention basin here, and what we're doing is we're proposing um, a storm scepter uh, for the full TSS and water quality volume removal, um, water quality treatment. Uh, and this is an infiltration basin that is proposed here. Um, that way, we're, basically what we're doing is we're capturing the water through the, um, the use of the road is being you know, channeled down through the road. It's going into that storm scepter. That storm scepter treats it. Then it goes into the infiltration basin, which will then further treats it um, into either recharging it or um, discharging out to the wetland. Um, but this thing was, this, this basin was, was designed to handle the 100-year storm event, just so you can be comfortable with that. On um, the basin, we have a full erosion control plan in here as well as as far as stabilization goes. <clears throat> so this is just a, more of a blow-up detail of it so you can see it a little bit better. Um, and it just depicts the limit of work and the side slopes area here. So this is just a blow up of the basin. Which this is basically what's called an, um, an erosion control plan for during construction and post construction, mainly for during construction. Things like a construction entrance pad for when trucks are in, entering and exiting the property. Make sure that you know dirts don't get onto the into the road. Um, any dirts that are getting into the road will be either swept up or cleaned up by the you know by the owner or the property or the construction company that's working on the property. Um, and these are just more details of the, of the um, actually, it's a, I apologize, I stated it's Storm Scepter, but it's actually a, a first defense unit, which is basically the same thing, just a different company. Um, but it is a, a first defense unit, works in the same manner, provides the same treatment. Um, so that's, that details here. And this is just more details. Um, I can go through any of the details that you wish um, and more, you know, any, any questions that you have about it, but uh, not to bore you with too much detail, but this is that's the broad range of what this is, or the, the brief description of what this is. It's just a sedimentation and erosion control plan that goes through pre and post construction. Um, and that's it. How wide is Rhode Island Road up for now? Uh, this is probably going to be wider and better, right? The Rhode is, Island Road. <laughs> honestly, it's almost exactly the same way. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, that's correct. Is uh, do you know if this this part of Rhode Island Road is not scheduled for rebuilding, right? 
Not that I believe. Okay, because they're starting Berkeley, Berkeley. And, and going, I don't, are they going all the way to 18? Uh, uh, are they going all the way to 18? That's, that's actually a good question. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And because I had some questions from people, if they were going to go further than that, because that section from 18 heading towards the town dump is also pretty shaky condition, but evidently they're going to be stopping there. Gotcha. So you don't have to worry about, you know, tying in with whatever they're doing, right? Correct. No sidewalks? Uh, there are no sidewalks. This is not a state layout, yep. even though a lot of people think it is, so mm -hmm. we're not required any mass dot filings or anything like that. So it's just basically tie into the existing pavement and, and go. The uh, replication area, what, what's the depth of the bottom? How approximate is it to the, the water table? Uh, usually we want to get within about six inches or so. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all spelled out on here. Let me just confirm this. Sometimes we do it differently. Uh, You're probably looking at about 84, 85. It says uh, finish grade elevation 80 and a half, 80.5, right? Okay, yeah. Excavate area down to finish grade. Elevation 80. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 80 and a half. I'm, I apologize, yes. All right. Yeah, we have a full replication plan with the tree and plant the trees and plantings. And obviously, that's something that during construction, like we've, we've had a few projects uh, similar to this where we've had crossings and re replication areas. We, what we do is we, we go out there with the agent at the time and sometimes it, you know, even though we might be showing that it being completely cleared, there might be vegetation there that can be saved. Um, you know, those are things that are discussed on site. Um, so those are definitely things, you know, those are uh, definitely a condition of the approval if, if it were to be approved uh, that we would absolutely want. Is, and it's actually noted on the plan as well um, that we would definitely want, you know, to meet with the agent out there and the contractor to, you know, go through all those, all those areas. Okay, we'll make that a condition of the... You can put it right in this erosion and sediment control notes, right? That's correct. Yeah, I believe it's actually, I believe it's in there. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about the conservation being out there. Okay. And erosion, oh, that's just erosion control and install and inspector for attic. Oh, wait a minute. Constructed in accordance with town and regulations. There you so. go. But it's better spelled out. Yeah, it's better to be spelled out that at some, at, you know, a certain point you're going to call the agent to come out and inspect it before you yeah, start absolutely. backfilling, I would think, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah actually, anytime there's, there's a change, uh, we'd like you to, to give us a call. Of course. Joseph. I know there must be regulations involving this, but I'm not familiar with what they are. 42 inches, I mean, that's big enough for a good-sized kids to get into. Are there safety concerns like gates or bars or something like that that you have to put? So at those. So three and a half feet. So it's really a working depth. Even though it's three and a half feet, it's really a working depth of two and a half feet because what's figured is at a hundred year storm event, uh, there's a foot of freeboard, meaning there's a foot of berm left. So it's really only two and a half feet in a one hundred year storm to. Um, you know, of working water in that area. Okay. So typically two to three feet, it th if you get the four feet, that's typically when we usually provide propose fences um, or gates or what have you. But again, it's it's completely up to the commission. It's it's your, you know. Well, that's not even something we're involved with, but I just figured that there might, I know there's always problems with large diameter pipes with not so much critters getting into it, but kids getting into kids them. And, Oh, oh, were you talking about the pipes themselves? Yeah, yeah the pipes I, themselves. Yeah, yeah. I apologize. I thought you meant. I, I apologize. Kind of I thought you meant the depth of the basin. Oh I no, no. Yeah, I thought you did too. The the, the 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 culverts themselves, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. almost four yeah. feet high. That, oh yeah. That's, Is there know, going to be some kind of cover on it or something like something? Like Usually you see bars, through. slanted bars. You can put so you can create. You can actually build like a, what's called like a trash rack. Trash rack. And yep. you and you build them right onto the onto the the pipe. Um, usually it's not going to be a flow. It's just going to be these are equalizing pipes. That these are just equalizing pipes. That's they're correct. Dead, dead level. That's correct. 
within a few tents. There. Yeah. Is there ever a time when this is dry? Um, honestly, I don't know. Derek might be able to answer that question better than I. I don't know if it's ever dry. I've never been out there to see. I've only seen it when it's wet. So do we think these pipes are going to always be half full? Or? Um, they, I don't think so. Yeah. No, I, I, they're not designed that way. Um, they're designed to be more like a quarter, a quarter full or so. Okay. But yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, that's up to the commission as far as, I mean, three and a half feet's a pretty big pipe, as you know. I mean, it's... It, well, it, I would think your own insurance company's going to want you to do something, right? Probably. Yeah. I, mean, I would... It would have to be a custom made, you know, something custom made if, if it was something that the commission wanted. Yeah. They don't make those, huh? I'd be surprised. No, they literally, you have to have a made machine shop made. They have to be called out. I mean, we usually make them for things like outlet control structures yeah. where you have, um, you know, the boxes, those concrete boxes, and you have the trash racks on those. Yeah. Because that's where the trash will collect uh, when the flow is going through. Mm -hmm. um, Something like this, honestly, it would, it's not typically something that you would do. Um, but again, I get the concern. So it would have to definitely be a custom made thing. Just for the uh, commission's uh, information, I walked the site uh, earlier this week with uh, with Jamie. So he pointed out most of the features that look at the only thing really we didn't see was the infiltration basin, but uh, everything else is pretty familiar. We've been out there on more than one occasion. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, there was an RDA that was done on this slot, wasn't there? Yes. Yeah. All right. I wasn't sure because <clears throat> the, the uh, address was different. It was 43 Main. Actually, the idea was on the lot to the left, which is lot two, uh -huh. which is my daughter's house. Okay. And for the record, Derek Max. I notice a property line, but only one property is referenced on this, and the road runs through that property to, through to this one. Is that? I still own both of them. Okay. It's all one property. Parcel it's B. basically all yeah, one property. Parcel B is 10 and a half acres. Yeah. But, you know, that's the sort of thing that years down the line comes back to haunt you. something you want to catch now. We went round and round and round on the 141, 142, 151, whatever that address was at the intersection of Highland and County there for a while. Still not sure we... <laughs> it's still not entirely sure what it is, right? What we agreed on. Anyone else? Are we good? Do you have a motion? Yeah, I make a motion to close the hearing. And issue a uh, order of conditions, <laughs> a standard order of conditions. Um, we would want to add a couple of things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, inspection. Inspection by the uh, Agent. Conservation Commission. Um, somewhere in that wet, wetland app replication area, probably after excavation, before any kind of backfilling. Yes. Um, what about these culverts? The covers. I. It's not not purview. I mean. Oh, it isn't. You know, no, not at oh, all. Right. You know, they no. say you know Derek's insurance company would probably have heart attacks if, if it's not. You know, I'm sure they'll become looking at that and go. And then maybe, uh, well, our highway guy would he get involved in this? Who's it, that? Uh, DBW guy. Well, this would be a private road. Yeah, right? it's never going to be. So probably not. But, but even if you're building a private road for at some point to be assumed by the town, you, you want to build it. To well, would you be looking for this to be a public road at some point? No, this would just be, well, this would be access for the... For the back lots, uh, right? Back, yeah. yeah so. and, and I'll work with now if, if we find somewhere in the regulation that that's needed, with, yeah. you know, just put that in motion that leave it up to you guys at that point. If you ever want to add it, we'll add it. Yeah. But we're not requiring it, but no. because it's an installation in a wetland, sure. that gives us... You may want to, so at that time, if you decide you want, we'll put it in. Okay. That's it? That's it. All right. Uh, we have a motion to have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. We're running out of people, and we have two more. We hearings. still have Niles. <laughs> Unfortunately for you. <laughs> you need a break? No, no break. No water breaks. You're doing the Janine Street one too? Is that the next one? Yes. No, is this it, is yeah. 44, right? Oh, oh no, it's nine, nine, you're right. Nine, nine Harding is next. Oh, Nine Harding yeah. is next? Janine Street's last one. Why does it say the representative is Jamie Bissonette? Yeah, that's false. Uh, it's false advertising. <laughs> the notices on the previous one were fine, by the way. Just the one that didn't get picked up. I love this this locust map, drive-in theater. Let's see, what was the last year the drive-in theater was there? <laughs> I'm amazed the screen is still up. <laughs> yeah. Is it? It's, oh, yeah. You know, 1961 or something. Well, you might. Let's see. JP was 10, so that was 1980. I know we saw Star Wars there. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I would have thought it was. Closed a lot earlier than that. 1980. I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I ever made it to that driving. I'll tell you a story, but we're on television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. Are we all set? Yep. Okay. According to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wetlands Protection Act, there will be a hearing on a notice of intent by Rocco, Rocco, Rocco? Rocco. Rocco, okay. Uh, Realty 2, LLC, for the construction of a self-storage building with associated parking lot, drainage, grading, and utilities within the 100-foot buffer zone of the bordering vegetated wetland. Location of the project is 9 Harding Street, Map 22, Block 2, Lot 14. The public hearing will be held on Tuesday, March 26th. Uh, at 7 p.m. Again, good evening for the record. Niles Zager from Senior Consulting Engineers. Uh, we're here before you for uh, the proposal of a 20,000 square foot self storage building off of Nine Harding at Nine Harding Street. Um, so I don't know if I know a few of you were on the commission at the time. We we permitted a uh, billboard, um, which mm -hmm. is actually located on this site. That's actually shown on this prop on the plan. Um, and this is just an, obviously a, a major extension to that. Uh, there, there was a current owner at the time, and so Rocco Realty would like to uh, move forward with this proposal. Um, what you still board's never gone in, has it? It has not, no. That's correct. Is it going to? It or? is. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, logistics with that, so I believe they're still working out the kinks, but yes, it is going to, to, going to go in. Um, so, this was actually approved by the planning board uh, back about a few months ago, I believe. And um, so what you see before you has already been reviewed and approved by them, um, drainage-wise, stormwater management-wise, uh, layout-wise. Um, <clears throat> I believe that Mr. Bashad, you can speak on this more, but he went out there with Jamie Bissonnette um, to, to walk the site. And um, uh, I believe that this line was actually locked in as far as from that old, that original order of conditions, this line was shown exactly the way it was shown on that original. The line out there is, as you can see, this is a very steep embankment. Um, so it's pretty clear, you know, within reason where that wetland line is. Um, so what you see before you is the majority of this, this area is either uh, pavement and or building. There's a, a large infiltration basin at the rear of the property where everything's being infiltrated. Either, either there or there's a few underground infiltration basins that are proposed in here for roof drains. Okay, and those and that's just to infiltrate the clean uh, water runoff. It limits the, the size of this basin a little bit, um, and it just acts as more recharge on the site. Um, so that everything that you see on this in this basin is capturing this entire uh, impervious area, and we've sized it for the 100 CS storm event. It's, it completely meets stormwater DEP stormwater management standards as far as PSS removal, recharge, water quality volume, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so is that that all that paved area pitching right towards that information? That's correct. Yeah, this is the uh, the intent is for this to all pitch right towards here. At velocity. If, what was that? It's pretty good pitch out there, right? Pretty it's good actually good. not as bad as you think it is, though. It looks deceiving. These are one foot contours. Um, okay. It's it's not as bad as you think. Yeah, I don't have them. Yeah, it's it's not it's not as bad as you think. Okay. It does. It's very flat in here, and then it steepens out a little bit just to kind of get catch the grade a little bit. But this is probably about a four percent grade okay. um, over the pavement. Well, it drops um, twenty feet from the top of foundation to the edge of the wetland. Yeah. That's correct. Fifty three to twenty three. So that's another thing I would like to talk about. Is you see the uh, retaining wall. If you you see this retaining wall, that it, it looks like a weird retaining wall as far as pictorially on the plan. That's because it steps back. As you build these, they step back. Yeah, step back. So if we were to just draw a straight line, you would look at it and say, oh, that's where the limit of work is. Well, that's not really the case. No. You know, these things step, they're big blocks. They're able to hold back that much material. But in order to do so, they step back, I believe it's like an inch or two on each step. Mm -hmm. And that adds up quickly over, you know, over that type of height. So um, that's why you pictorially you're seeing what you're seeing there. Um, I believe we're proposing ready rock um, retainer wall. Um, and we have a, a detail on that as well. So as far as the work goes, the 100 foot buffer is the work is a small portion of the a small portion of the building. Um, this parking, in, uh, oh, this uh, pavement here, small amount of drainage that retain the entire retaining wall, and a small portion of the infiltration basin here. Um, the majority of the site, or the majority of the rest of that proposed work, is outside that 100 foot buffer. Um, all the all the erosion control that silt sock we're proposing as far as uh, for delineating the limit of work um, obviously we would want that and that would be a condition that we would want that um, witnessed in the you know installation witnessed by the agent and um, it would be staked out at time of construction as well am I miss, missing this siltration is it on the plant are the silt sacks going to be, going to be removed once Everything's all paved and vegetated because you won't have any for them again. It has to be, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you, you're not going to do the blocking off the drain. You're going to use the silt sack to catch stuff and and pull them out once everything's stabilized. Okay. Because I, I noticed the they say they don't supply the one inch rebar to be able to get the thing that's, out of there. That's correct. And think of how much that must weigh. Exactly. Not that it's heavy, silt, boy. Silt, especially when silt gets wet, wet. it gets compacted, it, it really, it, it gets heavy quick. Can you do that by hand or do you need a machine? Um, it depends on, how, like a double grate, I would say absolutely yeah, you need yeah, to get a machine. But by budget, you, yeah. and again, it depends, but I've picked them up before by hand, not a problem. It just depends on the situation. Uh, the erosion control, to answer your question, is on the erosion control plan, um, which is located, uh, it's sheet e, E1. E1. Located towards the back. This is where we talk about, this is our standard sheet where we talk about uh, pre and post construction sedimentation and erosion control. Um, and that, er, that silt sock is delineated with, along with the detail, um, dewatering basins, uh, things of that nature that are during, for during construction um, if necessary. We didn't hit any water table out here at all. Um, oh, you guys, you can see where- Oh yeah, you're so high. We're yeah. so high and it's yeah. beautiful sands and gravels. Um, so I don't anticipate that, but again, things like the, the dewatering basin, uh, just things mm -hmm. that we put on there in case, if necessary, because you never know. But yeah, that silt sock, uh, you. you see it. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. And I see something that always makes me happy on the tree planting. Three inch bark mulch. not to be placed against the flare of the <laughs> trunk. I hate, I see quote unquote landscape companies do that all the time. Just pile the mulch up against the trunk of the tree, guaranteed to get bugs and worms and everything in there and they rot the, the thing out. Yep. So how, what's the closest point to the, to the Vegetated wetland. Uh, the closest point would be the retaining wall, which is, um, I would say, is about. I apologize. I'm going to mention on here, but if I were to give you a rough idea, 
Yeah, okay. Now, the, the retaining wall, uh, that's going to be designed by, by others, right? That's correct. It's a structural engineer. Now, these blocks, the, the, usually these big block, ready block walls, they, they can go up to 30 feet high with no, mm -hmm. with no reinforcement. Um, so a lot of times when you see these small blocks and they go over four feet, they need reinforcement. So they need to a grid that goes into the soil. Tie they, back they into tie the soil. Backs, yeah. And that, on a situation like this, you wouldn't be able to fit it. It would be going into the building. Um, so that's why these are honestly really necessary. Just the weight of them alone. Um, are they 1,100, 1,200 pounds a piece? It, depending they? on which one you get, but yeah. yes, they, some of them can be even more. Yeah. They're not being, it's not being done by hand, let's put it that way. And they have the little ridges, so they lock in that's, for that inch or inch and a half setback. That, yeah. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, they don't go anywhere. But it still has to be, for a wall of this height, to answer your question, Mr. Bashad, is that they, it has to be certified engineer. by a structural engineer. They have leap holes in those? Yes. Okay. How high is it? No. Uh, I believe. Hold on, I'll tell you the subject. Yeah, the, the, the retaining walls will be designed oh, by a registered 16. professional structural engineer. Yeah. I believe it's about 17 to 19 feet. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, okay. It's close to 20 feet. <laughs> Oh, it's like the one at the Ford dealership, that big thing. Yeah, that's, that, oh, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. The one at the Ford dealership, yeah. yes. So when that when that comes around, you of course will notify us. We'd like to uh, we don't we don't have to review the design, but I'd like to to know just what method you're going to use for the placement of the blocks, of course, equipment and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, and you can make that a condition of the approval. That's mm -hmm. that's not a problem at all. This is a question I always ask when there's a big good sized commercial parking lot. Do you have a dedicated or specified area for piling snow in the winter? <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, there's so much room back here that they have plenty of room back here to, to, to push off. The stuff in the, uh, you know, the area in the front, honestly, is just gonna be pushed off to the sides and the berms here. Um, but I would say most of this is gonna be pushed off the back end here and off the side here. Um, we from have time to time, we'll recommend Leaving an area in gravel unpaved. Yes. And put it put it back into the ground yeah. as opposed to letting it sit and run off and you know, and you know this oil and gas and grit and salt and who knows what else that run of course. off of course. off of pavement. Is this the extent of his lot? Or does uh, he own further back? Oh he owns much further back, uh -huh. yes. Yes, yeah, so he's got plenty of places to put the so. Dump it right over that retainer wall. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's <laughs> you don't want to get too close. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, any kind of a barrier to vehicles, so some person turning around his rental moving truck doesn't back over the. There's thing. a granite curb. <laughs> I noticed. Oh, uh, I believe there's a guardrail as well. Okay, yeah, it's going to need to be a built-in guardrail to the, yeah, to the wall. 16 feet. Yeah, yeah. I would think. There, there's anything over, I believe it's three and a half feet or four you, feet. Yeah, you, you need, need a guardrail. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, this this is absolutely a requirement. Otherwise, honey, I broke the truck. The nice thing, <laughs> the nice thing about those big blocks too is they can you can get guardrails that are actually built, built in right into them, to yeah. the wall. Oh, so they, I mean, they're not going anywhere when you when you put them in. The uh, the, the, the basin, I forget what you call it. Infiltration basin. Infiltration basin. Yes, sir. Uh, in the rear. Did you do any borings back there? Uh, yes, we did. We did some uh, uh, test pits back there. Mm. Do you recall where you found the water table? Uh, it would be, to be honest, I was not out there, it was Jamie. Well, normally it's me out there, but I was not out on this one. So no, otherwise I would probably know right off the top of my head. That's all right. I mean, to be honest with you, if I were to guess, it's going to be at the elevation of the wetland, which is roughly around elevation 23-ish, 22, 23-ish. We, so. uh, we, we've been on this site multiple times because of the various uh, proposals for, for this lot as well as adjacent ones. And in, in the rear of both properties, uh, we, we uh, in the area surrounding the infiltration basin, 
there are springs. There are springs that flow pretty steadily and feed that wetland system. Um, In fact, did we ever come up? Did, somebody found the name. Of, there actually is I think I, it was an Linda. intermittent stream. Yeah. Well, that was part of the argument at the time for uh, it, five is the, the lot next door. Is that that's, correct? That's correct. Okay. It's, keep getting the old nursery. The old nursery. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We got to keep them them separate. But we did go out to investigate the wetland in that area, and that was one of our findings, as well as the fact that there there are significant wetlands there, of course, um, and because the uh, the area underneath 44 hasn't been cleaned and you know with all the trash is like on the side of the road and the state hasn't cleaned out the culverts so the water is backing up and it's causing the, the surface water to infiltrate into these uh, little isolated pockets that are either isolated subject to flooding or they're they're separate wetlands I don't know but uh, they when we went out to look at this that's when we saw the springs uh, Obviously, coming out from that uh, that steep embankment and and, and just recharging uh, through the through the groundwater into the. So I was just wondering if the depth was was going to be critical to stay away from. I mean, all I can all I can tell you is that the bottom of the basin is at elevation 43, mm -hmm. and if I so let's say best case worst case scenario, the wetland's at 23, you're still 20 feet above mm -hmm. that wetland elevation. So okay, um, it's fine. And, and again, everything that I know that we found out there was all sands and gravel. So mm -hmm. even if it were to be a spring, there's a reason why it's flowing so rapidly is because it's 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 flowing through there because it's so easy to throw flow exactly through. exactly. Yeah. And the other thing that that impressed me when I was out there. Just this week, uh, Jamie and I also went walked this this site. It was Pokoy, Pokoy Brook. Uh, with all the rain we've had, it's hardly flowing. It, it's it's almost stagnant. Really? Uh, yeah, I expected it to be. <laughs> Surfs up, yeah. But, <laughs> uh, whether that's a function of, of uh, the culverts being clogged, I don't know. But uh, several, maybe three or four, along that stretch, uh, you, you can just see this. There's all kinds of stuff piled up against them, and the water is, isn't getting to the other side, to, to number 10. Um. Am I uh, missing something, or is there a septic? Uh, there's no, we actually have not proposed a septic oh, okay. yet. Uh, the septic is going to be put in the front. Uh, it'll be outside the 100 foot buffer. Okay. Right. Uh, but we have not proposed that, because the client, um, just honestly, he just didn't permit it. He didn't allow us to do it yet at this point. But okay. we're going to be submitting with the Board of Health at some point soon. But it won't be near the wetlands. That's correct. Okay. It will not be. And, and if for some reason something were to change, yeah, you guys will come back. We will obviously submit something to okay. you. Okay. Do we have the stormwater report? With the yeah, uh, I'm glad you reminded yeah. me. Uh, that's what I've got right here. Yeah, that's what. I've got the stormwater reports yeah. for this as well as the, the previous uh, hearing. So if anyone is uh, having trouble sleeping, I highly recommend. Uh, uh, I, I literally fell asleep trying to plow through it. Um, but I didn't see any problem with it either. Uh, what else? What did I see in here that was ongoing? Oh, the, yeah, the, it says here uh, there's an ongoing endangered species uh, thing going here. Leave the box there um, so, so pro most likely there was, a, was there, is there a tracking number there? Yeah, the track, yeah. there is a tracking number. Yes. So we haven't heard from them yet, right? That's correct. Okay. Not that, I, not that I'm aware. Jamie's had correspondence with uh, uh -huh. with Natural Heritage regarding the project. Um, you know, with, with they I called them with some questions, but they, I believe they were able to. You know, Jamie was able to answer all those questions, and it would be my my guess that they're going to issue a you know a no take letter shortly. Yeah, there is a separate Mesa review ongoing, and they do have the tracking number. Do 
Do we have a file number for this from DEP? Do we, do we get that? We got that? Yeah. Okay. This morning of DEP. 818. No. Big building. Yeah, it is. All inside storage, huh? Inside storage. Yeah, that, that surprised me when he, when he was explaining it. I said, where are you going to park all the boats and trailers He's inside? Be quite the, quite the structure, well, three three decker. Uh, Two hundred by a hundred. Two hundred that, by a hundred. Yeah, that's correct. Twenty thousand square feet. Hmm. Got to have room to store all our stuff. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. <laughs> Should we get more stuff. <laughs> yeah. Got to have room for the bar. <clears throat> Know that stuff expands to fill the space available and, for it. <laughs> and around here is nothing in comparison with uh, Northern Virginia. Oh, you would tell, yeah. They, they're everywhere. Everybody has one. Yep. All inside storage. Yeah. It's, everywhere it's, you go, you see them. It's, it's the, that whole area, it, it, everyone's so mobile. Yeah. They, they exactly. need all that storage. No one stays anywhere for it. How long did you stay there? Two years. Two years. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, are you all from the north? <laughs> Can I make a motion? Yes. So this, oh, this is a notice of intent. It's a notice yeah. of intent. Yeah. So I, I make a motion to close the hearing, issue a standard order of conditions. Um, was there anything special we wanted to do? I don't think so. Uh, just the uh, uh, chief technical engineering uh, notify us. Yeah, obviously we'll get designed and we'll get that stuff. Let us know what's going on there. Yeah, I would definitely make it in. But I think that's, that's it. Well, I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Niles is here for this one, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is a repair, right? Oh, uh, this is a repair. Yep. We like to see repairs. Yep. Thanks. I like in the write-up, it says abandon slash remove the existing septic. Have you decided what you're doing yet? Because portions of it are being abandoned uh, and portions Portions are, are being, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, technically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just shy of 20,000 square foot lot. Yes, sir. Oh, the, the new system's just outside the buffer zone, right? Or right on the 100-foot buffer line? Uh, yes. I'll go through that. All right, everybody's all set? Yep. Let's move on, then. According to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wellness Protection Act, you'll be hearing on a request for determination of applicability by Sandra Wilson for the repair of a septic system within the 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. Location of the project is 7 Janine Street, map 39, block 5, lot 36. Public hearing, will, public hearing will be held on Tuesday, March 26th at 7 p.m. Uh, good evening uh, again for the record, Niall Zega from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Um, I'm here before you for our septic repair at 7 Janine Street. Um, so this was actually approved by the Board of Health last week. Mm -hmm. uh, we got approval. There was multiple uh, variances, variances that were asked for because of uh, budding wells, things of that nature. Um, so to first start off, basically what you see is um, all the wells, uh, for the most part in the rear, uh, I'm sorry, in the front of the property, and there's the wetland in the back. Then we also had a well on the abutting property that was in the rear. So it kind of shoved everything in one spot that we could put it. Luckily, that kept the septic system exactly 100 feet from the wetland. Um, <coughs> because this is a wetland tributary to a surface water supply, it's tributary to, um, to Long Pond. Title V requires that you 
try to hold 100 feet in a repair if you can. There's a minimum of 100 feet. Typically, if it was a standard BVW, it's 50 feet for a septic, but in a situation like this, it's 100. So we did everything in our power, asked for a bunch of variances from the Board of Health and were granted them, kept the system exactly 100 feet, um, so we didn't have to at least ask for that variance. Um, but what that did mean is uh, obviously we had to grade it off. Um, and we're, so we're with our limited work, we're about 80 feet from that wetland in the rear of the property. Um, there is a flood zone. Um, it's actually off the property. I didn't even show it because when I did my topography. Um, it's X zone anyway, isn't it? I'm sorry, what it's was an that? X zone? No. It's, it's, it's minimal flood area, right? It's an A. No, it's AE. A, oh, AE? Yeah, it's AE 57. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the low point on that property is a 58 right at wetland flag, two and one and two. And the pond is 54, 55? Uh, the, the flood zone is 57, but the pond is about 55-ish. Yeah, 55-ish, yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah, just to kind of give you an idea of where you're at elevation-wise. The system, as you can see, this is the size of the house here. It's not a huge house, but it's still a decent-sized house. You can see the system, how much bit larger it is. The perk rate that we got out there was not a good one. Um, so it, this, uh, obviously, the, the higher the perk rate, the bigger the system that it gets. And this is only for a two-bedroom home, so um, the Se system is, is very large. 78 chambers. <laughs> it's very, very large, especially for a two-bedroom. So. Um, Unfortunately, if it was a much smaller, we might even have been able to keep out of the 100 foot and not even have to be here in front of you, but um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So um, we're before you for, I think, very limited work. That's why we filed an RDA. It's all within existing, um, I don't want to call it lawn area because it was never really maintained, but it's a, it's a backyard that was never really upkept. Um, there's not a lawn or anything like that. It's just kind of just an unkept backyard. Um, there's some trees that are going to have to come down. I believe there's two um, that are going to have. They're fairly large pines. Uh, they're right at the 100 foot buffer, honestly. Um, but everything else is outside the 100 foot buffer. Is it a raised system? Uh, yes, it is. It's only, there wasn't a water table issue, to be honest with you. Uh, we didn't really find a water table. Um, down, I went down about nine feet and didn't find oh, yeah. anything. Um, but, and you can see it slopes off pretty good to that wet one. So it's, somewhat makes sense. Um, but what we're doing is we're trying to, just because of how bad the material was, we're trying to keep it up as high as we can and do so you have to grade it off in the back. Yeah. When you say bad, what kind of perk are we talking about? 51 minutes an inch. And the, the mass limit is 60? That's for new construction. With a repair, you're allowed up to 90 minutes an inch. 90. So, so we, even though it was bad, it could be a lot worse, trust me. You know, you know what the perk was on, on my lot? Two. That's a good one. If, if I'm recalling it correctly, isn't there one of these large trees, I don't remember if it was a pine or not, like right on the corner right. of the building? Yep. It's starting to encroach. Yep. Yeah. Is that, is that one coming down? I believe so. Yeah. 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 It would make sense even if you weren't doing the septic system to right. take that. Oh, it's got it's yeah. to come down. Yeah. I wouldn't say insurance wise, once they, they're going to have to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But besides that, pretty straightforward. Again, it's been approved by Board of Health. The other last that we came before you, because um, I knew what was going I wanted to get Board of Health approval first because I knew there was so many you know, va you know variables with the wells and the Board of Health. I wanted to make sure they were happy with it. They weren't happy with it, but they were happy with you know, the proposal. Well, we're always happy. I, I assume the president system has failed. It's, it's, to be honest with you, it's a tank with two pits that are in the water oh. table right now. They're down about eight and a half, nine feet, and they're completely in failure. Always in favor of replacing those. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so this is a much shallower, larger system that's obviously meeting current standards. Okay, I make a motion that uh, we close the hearing and issue a negative determination to allow the proposed work to proceed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Now you can leave. <laughs> Actually, uh, I don't know if the board of the commission has wanted to give me one more time, but I didn't know if the uh, commission had a minute to talk about it. It's not on the agenda, but 5 Harding Street, the budding of 9 Harding Street. The old um, Lakeville nur uh, Nursery? That's correct, the old, the old nursery. The oldest. Okay. So, we were contracted by the new owner um, to, and I believe Outback Engineering had been out there um, to look at the wetland line, uh, and I believe that it's all been 
I think as you stated, uh, Mr. Bashad, is it's all been scrutinized and what have you. Um, our client wants, to, and Jamie had asked me to, to speak on the fact that we're going to be filing, obviously, something in the, in the future. Um, as far as locking in the wetland line that's there now, um, would the board or would the commission be amenable to us doing an RDA, or would you would you uh, prefer uh, ANRAD? Um, I know you've used RDAs in the past. I know that it's been scrutinized pretty significantly as far as that line goes, um, but again, it's it's your call. That's why why we're asking so we can you know give an input to our to our client. When's the last time we, we were there for the line? Oh. We're talking 10 years, right? Yeah. Well, it's hard to say because we've gone back for just Un sections, sections of it, yeah. not as yeah. a whole. Um, but yes, yeah, probably that long. Wasn't Spillane in that was here the, for something? That was the that? last one. That was two, three years ago, yeah, maybe. Because I was on the board. And, and then, for, for a number of years, it was constantly being referred to Spark as... It. The market, market basket, basket site. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, I believe they had a whole project to prove, yeah. right? That's correct. Yeah. The market basket. And then. Well, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess I don't need an answer right now if, if you don't feel comfortable answering. If you want to discuss it as far as I, I'm not put, trying to put you on the spot. I just, it's something that's going to come up and we obviously want to direct that client which way to go. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know. Well, if you do an RDA and there's going to be any changes at all, more than a few, you'd be better off with an ANRED because then you would get a definitive yeah. wetland line. Yeah, like I was saying before, because the, the, uh, the flow, uh, surface water flow has changed a lot because of the, the backup that's occurring. So there are maybe some wetland areas that no longer exist, whereas others have, have cropped up. And so um, this might be a case where we'd, we'd like to have Lenore take a look at it first and give a determination, and then you guys can come out and do do the uh, do an interim. Do you think that it, you might want to spend some time contacting the state and finding out if there, if anyone's taking care, the state's taking care of any of the drainage, the drainage over there, because that's the property that would be more yeah. affected. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it's more low lying, obviously. Because if, if they keep after it, and, you know, pull stuff out of there and keep the flow going, mm -hmm. there will be less of an impact on that lot five. Is that it's lot five? I believe so. It's number yeah. five. Number, yeah, number five. five. Yeah. 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 There was a nine, there was a ten. Ten's across the street, of course. Yeah. All right, yeah, we'll give it some, some thought. Okay. And uh, Great. Now, our next, our next meeting uh, while you're here is, uh, is uh, the regular schedule, the second, second Tuesday. I forget what the date is, but. Is it the 9th? Maybe? No. What's the that? Is it the 9th? I should have Tuesday, here. This... March, April the 9th, yes. April 9th, okay. Um, now, now, Jamie or somebody from your office brought another filing, but I don't remember where it is, what the location is. Uh, so we would try and schedule it for that. Um, but the 23rd is still, is still uh, open, vacant. No, yeah, open. That's what I meant to say. Um, just so you're aware, we'll, so we'll, we'll try and schedule it for this uh, next, for the upcoming one. Okay. Um, and the notice is going to have to go in next week. And as you know, we're, we're now asking you guys to do it. Absolutely. Which you've done, and I appreciate it. No, no, not a problem. That's simple. That's, so just that's a reminder that that's our next meeting. Yeah. And I believe we're going to have another one uh, before you um, in the near future for another septic repair on Oak Street. So okay. um, that, as far as septic repairs go, I guess this is another good question. Um, this one, I'll be about 50 feet away um, from the wetland. Uh, for a septic repair, it's in the backyard, no no tree clearing at all. Small lot? It's a small lot. Um, same exact situation. This one's within the 100 feet of that tributary to our surface water supply. Failed system? But it's a failed system. I mean, typically RDAs you guys are okay with. Yeah. You want to replace it. Yeah. yeah. We, we filled one that was in like in 50 before. Okay. We filled. We approved. Yes. 
Okay. All right. Just so I, I have a somewhat of a guideline to follow. Um, that's typically how most towns do it, 50 feet or over. They With septic repairs, they typically let us do an RDA. So I just wanted to confirm that. Okay. So, now I have a question for you. Yes, sir. What's going on across the street from your office? <laughs> we, we've been told about 30 different things. 30 different things, yeah. And um, what we finally found out was it was a Stryer-owned property, and they, again, this is still could be hearsay, but they, I, I was told that they just cleared it just to um, it basically safe. show, make it visible and show yeah. people what's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's that's really only all is what, what it was. Yeah. I've heard anything from a car wash. Yeah, we've heard the car wash, wash story. Yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah. several yeah. times. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was hoping it would, to be honest with you. I'd love to have a cow wash right across the street. Right there, yeah. Well, there is a for sale sign on, on yeah. the yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you, but. <laughs> is that it? That's it. All right, thank you very much for your okay. time. Okay, thanks, thanks. 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 I talked to uh, Lori today. She's going to give us last minutes. Last meetings minutes no, and okay. these together. All right, good. We should be doing two at a time. Yeah, right. yeah. I forgot to ask her today, so yep. I'm glad you. What else do we have on our agenda? Uh, okay. First of all, under new business, uh, I issued a no notice of violation informally for 160 Bedford Street. And if you're not familiar with the, the number, it's the corner of 18 and, and 79. The old train. The old depot. train depot. Oh, where the tire depot was. Well, they've been digging out in the yeah. Know. Well, I, yeah, I drove we've been by down there a couple week, of times, yeah. And they were cutting trees. And uh, not supposed to be. Well, they hadn't filed or anything. Um, Is that all wetland back there? Yeah, there's two wetland areas. Uh, so I didn't say anything at the time because <clears throat> it looked like they were far enough, far enough away, and they were only in the cut, cutting trees. But I did call uh, Prime Engineering to see what, what else was going on. And I said, uh, you're aware they're cutting trees? And he said, uh, well, yeah, we didn't think it was, it was an issue. So I went down and took a look at it, and lo and behold, the wetland that's right on the corner is, uh, <clears throat> is within the 100 foot. To top it all off, the neighbors, uh, the abutters, uh, that have part of the wetland on their property complained. They called and wanted to know what was what well, was. They going were actually on. in the office, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what prompted my my initial uh, mm -hmm. look. So um, I went back out there to, to 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 confirm it again, and now they're digging test pits. Yeah, I saw a couple excavators. And uh, I said, uh, so I went to to see the, their uh, Prime's uh, field guy. So what's going on? He says, Oh, we're digging test pits for perks. I said, well, perks are one thing, but you're excavating into the, into the, the mound that, that's there. Um, with this huge machine uh, over a disturbed area adjacent to a wetland. I said, you've got to stop. Shouldn't he know that? And when he wasn't there, <laughs> I was there chastising yeah. <laughs> everyone on site, hauling the poor real estate so, guy in, you know, yeah, who's so going. Was really, you well, know, the poor kid was, was kind of young and didn't realize what was going on. Yeah. But so I don't, I don't fault him. But anyway, so I, I talked to Prime and, and said, look, you, you can't do any more work. You, you've got to file a notice of intent. Uh, if you do any more work, I'll give you a formal uh, notice of violation. Um, so they haven't done any work <coughs> except for putting in a silt fence all along the wetland margin. Joe had one. You talked to him about putting one in the back, in the back which was another wetland yeah. area. There's a huge yeah. pond back there. <coughs> but they put one in. Uh, along along the edge of uh, where the test pits were. And that's good because that was the day before we had all the rain, and I was afraid all the disturbed would. would. Yeah. So I, I applaud them for the fast response in, in doing it, and they're going to uh, do a filing. So. And in, in their defense, I guess there was a bunch of crap back there. Oh, yeah. They oh. cleaned yeah. out, right? They yeah. Clean, oh, yeah. They spent quite some time. Ties and... Yeah. 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 And junk and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, actually, if we'd have been smart, we would have picked up on it sooner and said, "Look, we we appreciate the work you're doing. Just the fact that it's inside the, the buffer right. zone, you should." Do they pull the permit for any of this? No. Oh. And they're going to the real estate guy, Joe Avenato, told me they're uh, they're going to they were going to demolish it, pull the permit yeah. to demolish the that old pillow. train station, but now they're going to save it. They're going to yeah, they're going to turn it into offices. It would take offices. much to demolish it. <laughs> No. Well, it looks actually, like it's leaning in. Well, anyway. you know, it's actually, the, the bones on the thing are actually not bad at all. Yeah. 
You know, it can be straightened out. It's, yeah, it's a building worth saving. We go yeah, take a look inside. I've it been does. in it. Yeah. Well, when the the guys were there, they did some some work on one of my trucks. Oh yeah, the and entire shop. Yeah. It was. <laughs> I was sweating it. I didn't want to stay in that building very long. <laughs> I guess what they want to put back there on that piece of property, that lot is actually business zone. Yeah. And they want to put what is it like a three or a four bay contractors. Uh, yeah. Contractors. Contractor base. Yeah. Lisa Bay, rent a yep. bay deal, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see what ends we'll up see. happening there. But so that's that's where that goes. Okay. If anyone's interested, put the map here. So nothing formal, but they've stopped. Not yet. Not yet. But they will they did agree to do a notice of intent. Okay. And there's other pieces of land on the other side. Right. There's, that, yeah, there's a lot more. It looks like it's done. It looks like it's really wet, right? There there is. Yeah. Yeah. That hill that's there is going to come down, but it's it's uh, it's not very good stuff. Oh, yeah. He's got stuff across the road, too. Yeah, across the road, the other side of 18, right? That, that, that looks really wet. That, and then there's the other is. two lots. But, you know, it's it's what it is, it's like a lot of roads you find in New England. When they built the original road, they just scooped stuff from right. the side, and as they built it wider and wider, they scooped more stuff. So you see a lot of wetland. Those areas, if you can get through them on back it's, of the property it's on the you know, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty yeah. high land but it's getting to it is the problem <laughs> that's common in the way and that's what a, that's a wetland crossing right yep. for us yep mm -hmm. with the whole thing with the culverts and the whole deal right essentially what Derek just got approved yes yeah what else we got all right 415 Millennium Circle uh, this is just uh, uh, an inquiry uh, I've got a Plan here if anybody wants to look What's at it. What's 415? It's uh, it's Millennium Circle is is next to the uh, it's across from Monkeys. Right. All right. There's oh. a, there is a um, storage facility there. Right. Yep. yep. And uh, this is a building that is at on that location. It's outside the buffer zone, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's the Popoy Brook uh, flows uh, fairly close to it. Yeah. On the if you're facing it on the right side. Yeah. Right. The only work they're doing is rehabbing the building, changing some doors, some windows, some parking areas, no major construction, no heavy equipment. So the question was, do we do we want them to file an RDA, or a notice of intent, or? How close are they gonna to be to Pocoy? Um, it's about 200 feet. They're not excavating, right? No, with the exception of maybe pulling up some blacktop for, for changing the parking. Geez, I, with that distance, I, I can't see I, I, an RDA. You can't see an RDA, or you no? I, I see no reason for one. No, why would they even have to come before us? They are would, riverfront area. Yeah, are, are kind of leery about it. It does all pitch down. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. sent um, Lenore out to to see just what the extent of the bank was, and she said it's close, and maybe just for the sake of having it on record, we have them do an RDA with no. Okay. I didn't know Lenore had been up there. Yeah, no, she went on Thursday or mm -hmm. I think of last week. So I, that's kind of my feeling too. Uh, and Joe, Jamie was okay with it. He, I think he, he agreed Bless that him. they, they want to have it on the record. You got cool see it? Sure. So, but but I wanted to bring it before you as well and see what you thought. I can go, I can go either way. Well, that's quite a distance. I mean, you get this wetland here, but. Yeah, I can't, uh, you know, I mean, I, I understand what uh, Lenore's saying, but. I don't think it's within our purview. And this is the edge of the, the pavement right here. This is all gravel, which you know will absorb anything. I I, I can't see doing that. Uh, I will. Let and the highlighted, it's not within an ACEC either. So <clears throat> here you go. Uh, this is just a draft. Perfect. So uh, if you see any any mistakes, let me know. Especially with contact. 
information. No June meeting? Oh, never mind. Yeah. It's over here. <laughs> And, I, and I'm going to try hard to limit us to one hearing a month. I know lately we, we've been doing two right along. And the original intent of the second one was just to be administrative, but mm -hmm. we've sort of fallen into uh, the trap of using it for, for hearings. So I'll try hard to hold them off and only, only schedule one, but we'll see how that goes. I have a comment. Yes. Uh, we have Lenora White as agent and Bouchard as chairman. Yeah, well, you are now the chairman draft. and agent. Yeah, it's draft. We're and gonna... she's what consultant now? What what are she's, we? She's our consultant. A now. consultant. So yeah. you make that change, right? Yeah. Okay. And do we have the right number for you, Josh? Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So you know, we'll need uh, Will's information as well. So. BMW Joe, who's that? <laughs> okay, I want to know. All right, and finally, I need signatures. Uh, Josh, since it's it's not official yet, uh, we haven't heard from. Yeah, that's fine. So there should be four. Did you ever find a good place to eat in Baltimore? Crab cake. No, no, I ended up going right through. I won't be here for the next meeting, though. I'm going to be in Trinidad. Oh, Trinidad. Oh, wow. Sure. No, not no. on vacation. Now, <laughs> you you conveyed to your boss the info I gave you about Trinidad, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, we got some information from the company that we do all our travel stuff through. Yeah. And they basically said, don't go out at night. And yep. Yep. they actually said, don't go to any of the beaches. Yep. Yep. High crime at the beaches. Yep. Isn't that and, pretty uh, true? Any any resort? Oh yeah. Don't go outside the resort. No, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. So are we responsible to get rid of our own paper now? Uh, <laughs> let's do this. If you want to keep. Maps or, or filings for your own uh, joy and whatever <laughs> you're welcome to. If if not, just bring them back to me, and I'll uh, I've got to make up a file and uh, we'll recycle. Okay. These are all the notices. Okay. But bring them back to you at the office or give them to you now. Uh, actually, if you wouldn't mind, yeah, uh, since there's quite a load of them, bring I'll, them back to the office. I'll drop <laughs> Training tomorrow, so I'll be out in ten to two. What are you doing tomorrow? They're doing more of the training stuff. For the computer stuff? For uh, no, for um, grants and oh, things okay. like that. Uh, I went through two cycles of training on the new voting machines. Oh, yeah, did you? Yeah. Oh, do you help out at the polls? Well, I've been a poll worker for a long time. And he found out he could count, and that was yes. it. Yes. <laughs> And we found out that some machines can't. Oh. Really? Oh, this. <laughs> okay, let's make sure I don't sign that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. We were at the first one, which was a two-hour session, and we're, and, we're, and we're doing. Um, I did get this. Filling out fake ballots and so forth with you know, Disney princesses, and, you know that yeah. that sort of thing on there. You know, and we're doing everything we can to screw up these machines. We're wetting them down. We're folding oh, so them. We're them. Them. Yeah, that's the okay. whole idea right. yeah. to try to Let's make the that. machine go fluey. Uh -huh. They've been using the machines in Massachusetts for two, three, and four years. Middle World's had them for about a couple of years, and basically they haven't really had a problem. But the next day, I was feeding some in the machine of the town hall. And we, you, you can't go in like this, but you have to get down your hands and knees to get the ballots out of the slots. And we lost the ballot. 
we're off by one. Oh, oh. The, the horror. When you're a vote counter, this is the horror. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay? And I'm going to so haul out my little flashlight. There's one stuck jammed. down. No, not jammed. Oh. It just, you know, that, that 60, 70 pound stock that the ballots are. Yeah. It was just, it was just sitting there on a ridge, <laughs> hiding. And you couldn't see the thing because you did down like this trying to get them out. So right away, Lillian Drain, the town clerk was there. She said, because I hauled out the flashlight, she says, okay, all the vote counters are going to have to have flashlights now. <laughs> so you can see down inside that thing. Could you get it out? Oh, yeah. 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 Once you, once you knew where it was, okay. but you have to take the electronic pot off and then the cover off. See, I didn't know they would let you do that. Yeah, I kind of well, well, you, take you, it apart. You ha well, this is after the polls have closed. Oh, all right, all right. Because you don't know there's one I stuck. So, so mm -hmm. all the ballots will go through with that thing in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The worst problem, uh, the problem I see, the, the main problem with the machine, with the machines, is you, you put it in, and it goes, oh, okay, a ballot. <laughs> and you know Americans, they want to... <laughs> Okay, yeah. and especially if it's a husband and wife, and they want to, no, 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 you have to wait like yeah, three full <laughs> seconds to make sure otherwise the thing wants to spit back out at you. Yeah. Okay, and, I mean, if you're going to do a new voting machine, make it work super fast, not slow. <laughs> but they haven't really had problems, so I hope, hopefully I'm we will. I'm looking forward to the day you can cast a vote from your living room couch. Can't oh, yeah. yeah. I don't see hey. why they can't do that. Do it online. Right. You do everything else online. Okay. Was that four? Yes. Three okay. for him. He's three and four. Uh, including, yeah. you hear about the new Domino's app? Thanks, I heard sir. something about it, but. <laughs> Your cars will come from the manufacturer with the ability to audit Domino's as you drive along. <laughs> Don't even have to use your cell phone or anything cost like that. Domino's to do? You know? And the idea now, if we can have a drive through, you go through 30 miles an hour, the guy brings the pizza <laughs> and she goes, It's actually brilliant on their, on their part, right? Well, they are the most tech savvy pizza place. They're way ahead of, you know, yeah. all the, the other places. Yeah. In the town of Tonawanda, New York. New York, yeah. Right next, right in between Niagara and, uh, I forget what the next town, but it, it's, it's the place where uh, Buffalo Wings were. Oh, were okay, invented. yeah. There's a, a former car wash there, one of, one of the automated things. Yeah. They turned it into a liquor store. So you can drive, drive in, through liquor store? Order what you want. John. You, you, you drive through, they open your trunk, they fill it with, with everything. There's something wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> All through the South. Yeah, All right. of Texas. Oh, drive through A&A A drive through Texas, You never have Florida. to get out there. Uh, drive through you can't even make it out of your vehicle, but nope. they'll come right out. That's like, right. Yeah. Like Bob said, they'll throw the cases of beer in the front. Of course, I went in and bought, I don't know how many pounds of ice. It was like 20 coolers full. He said, I want to go where you're going. <laughs> oh. I said, no, actually, you don't want to go where I'm going. I'm going to Love Canal. Do we have a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. And Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.